Let's inspect this house that's behind me. I'm Ben Gramico from Internachi. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And we're going to conduct a home inspection on this house that's in Italy. And every home should be inspected by a certified home inspector. And it doesn't matter if you are a home buyer, a home seller, or a renter. You wanna make sure that the home is safe and healthy. So follow me and let's inspect this house. When I conduct a home inspection, I start on the exterior and I'll move towards the roof. And on this tile roof in Italy, I'm not going to walk on the roof. I don't want to damage it. So there's the roof there. We'll fly a drone. But while I'm here with you, this home is on a hill. Behind me is the sea, Mediterranean Sea. And so everything is sloped around the property. But what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that everything is sloped around the property that's close to the property, especially hard surfaces like this. So when it rains, we want water to be diverted away from the house. That front porch there, I want that sloped slightly away from the front door. This driveway's sloped away. And then the, the road goes down and away. And we have some stone walls, common. Very large stone walls. And we'll take a look at those stone walls to make sure there isn't any major moving, structural movements, damage, missing pieces. So we'll take a look at that. But as I, you can see, the hill is sloped away from the house. So I'm gonna walk around and this is the front gate. And then that is the neighbors. So it's always good to start away from the house and work your way in just to make sure that you know where to look and where to walk. So let's go through the gate. So go through the gate and you can see the property has a few units down here. There's a, a master bedroom, living room, kitchen, and bedroom up there. And then there's three more bedrooms down here. But again, I'm on the exterior and I'm moving my way towards the property and looking at how the ground surrounding the house and the foundation is sloping away and managing water. You wanna manage the water away from the house. So all things need to be sloped away. And a little concerned about this area here. This seems to be a low lying area where maybe some rain and water could puddle up. So on the inside, I wanna look for signs of water penetration or water is getting in. And then there's, from this angle, I can see a flat surface, a porch here, concrete steps going up. And I wanna make sure that flat surface, hard surface, is sloping away from the foundation. So another hard surface that we want sloped away. Another step and hard surface that we want sloped away. The ground looks good, it's sloped away. Around here. You can see the natural rock formations. This rock was here and they built a home on top of it, which is very nice. Nicely done. Great landscaping. Outdoor shower. And then I hear a pool pump. And the pool, I hear the pool here. And then the exterior, some more steps going up, some sidewalks, stone, the landscaping. Making sure things are diverted away, but here's the pool. Nice. And the hard surfaces, we'll take a look at that. Looks like a little bit of a balcony and a good vantage point of the tile roof. As a home inspector, you're required to inspect the roof. 
you don't have to walk upon any roof surface and I don't want to walk upon this tile roof. But I have a vantage point right up there. I can take a look at the roof. So the retaining wall is there. I think there's a neighbor's parking area up there. And we're moving towards the front again where the parking area is. And we started there out on the street. That's the stone masonry walls, retaining walls. And the house wall is made out of stone on the outside. And these smaller stones act like shims to support the, the stone and the, the mortar in between the stone. And this stone is on the outside with a concrete, um, poured concrete, reinforced concrete foundation wall. Maybe some load bearing walls on the inside, but it's a, a concrete house structure with stone on the outside. So what we want to do is just take a look around. Looks like it's built well, but we want to look to make sure that there's a part of the concrete foundation you can see, and the stone was built on top of it. And we'll take a look around at the structural components of the house. So that's the exterior. I don't have any problems except for the low-lying area underneath that staircase. So I want to look on the inside. I want to keep in mind what I saw on the outside. And I'm always looking for how does the homeowner manage water? How is the property managing water? Water management is critical. Water is great. It can uh, provide life, but it can also water destroys. Water can destroy a home if left to go. So what you want to do is, as part of a maintenance plan, a routine maintenance plan, get your home inspected by a certified inspector and look for potential problems and fix them before they become big problems. All right, so let's go around the house again. At the house, there are these additional structures. These are made out of wood, load-bearing components and wood. The load-bearing components are made out of wood. So what we want to do is look where the wooden load-bearing components touch the ground. Why? Because it could be damaged by water right there. And you want to probe the bottom of the load-bearing post, which holds up this roof over the parking area, and look for wood rot or maybe some insect damage. And as a home inspector, we can't see underground or below a surface or where things are hidden. But there are some indications that there could be problems. So we have infestation here and it's beetle. So there's some beetle holes and you can see Oh, that it's deteriorated by an insect. Um, I don't want to identify the actual bug that is causing the damage, but I know it's an insect that's causing damage to a structural component. And so we need further evaluation by professional and get that bug or insect managed. Just like managing water, you have to manage pests or insects that cause damage. Now these components up here are strapped, but that strap up there is um, doesn't loop all the way around, right? It's just attached with one fastener up there. Ideally, it would be looped around with a couple other fasteners. So maybe another fastener up here to hold this down. We don't want this to move. There's a lot of weight above us and the car. But no other problems that I see. Okay, let's keep going. As you walk around the house, looking at the exterior system, I'll bump into other systems like 
the cooling system, the HVAC system. So this is the exterior condenser. It's a split unit with electric lines being supplied and distributed. And there's a condensate drain, right? Dripping down. And we want to find the control to this unit. It's probably for this bedroom behind me. It's running right now. So that's good. And it's securely attached to the house. I wouldn't worry about the surface rust. It's very minor. And it sounds good too. So what I can do for my client is take a picture of the manufacturing label and look up more details if I wanted to. Here's that air conditioner unit. We saw the exterior component outside and the normal operating controls on the inside. On the outside of the house, there's a, an upper deck, like a sunbathing deck. And so from here, I can see a safety concern. If a child goes up on the sun deck and plays, they may fall through the spaces of the railing. So the guard, the guard here, the guard here is a vertical oriented barrier to prevent people from falling off of a surface that's very high from the ground and they could easily get injured. The spaces between these components are large enough for a person and a child to fall through. So that's a concern that I have. And the steps. This step is different from this step. And there's a bit of a trip hazard here where the orientation of this step could cause somebody to maybe surprise themselves, right? We want really a, a post of a guard here and a handrail here to prevent somebody from losing their step and balance. So this is a grippable rail. However, you can't slide, it's not continuous. You can't slide your hand down because of this vertical component. And again, a child could fall through. And this railing, this guard is too low. So let me use the measure app on my iPhone and measure it from bottom to top. And it's about 33 inches. That's too low, not safe. And from here, this vantage point, we can see the towel roof. It's always good to check the tile roof as part of a, a maintenance plan. Okay, let's keep going. Tile roof in Italy. And you can imagine the water running off, it goes right there. And instead of dropping onto the wall, it's kicked out. It's kicked out by tile. And it's supported by tile and masonry. That's the best kick out I've seen. While inspecting the exterior, you come across different systems and components. So here's a component here. Wonder what it is. Well, it's the bathroom exhaust. It's a very large open hole, pests, vermin, uh, lizards, can, birds can use this as an entry point into the house and we don't want that. So a, um, a grill or a hood or a grate of some kind could be added to that bathroom exhaust. I like that the bathroom fan exhausts outside, but we don't want things to go in. Just taking a look around, here's some steps going down the side of the house with a handrail attached to the guard. That's nice. But actually it stops before the steps end. It doesn't continue. A handrail, and in this case also a guard, a handrail should continue with every step, but this one 
stops a little short. So if I was to have a, a need for a handrail, um, the first one, two, three, four risers are without a handrail. And moving around the house, we have another set of steps. One, two, three, four risers, but no handrail. So if I was a person who needed assistance going up steps, this would be an issue for me. Or um, it's really just for anybody, actually. This is an exterior staircase. It could be slippery. And if you do slip, a handrail, which is a graspable component, often um, installed on top of a guard or integrated with a guard. But right here, a handrail should be on one or both sides. And it's used for guidance and support, especially when you absolutely need it, like you're going to slip. You wanted to grab onto something, that's a handrail. Okay, as we move around, I can see that the hard surface is sloped away from this large slider door of a bedroom here. And it slopes down here, but I'm not sure where it would go. Drain that way, maybe. But there is definitely a slope, a good slope. And it looks like it puddles up even over there. So now I'm going to think of two spots, that grassy area by the stairs and this spot here on the outside. I'm going to make sure that we don't have any water intrusion problems, water penetration problems on the inside. And this is going to be in the rear corner below this large deck here. So I'm gonna take a look at how water is managed in this area. And it looks like it may be puddling up. Water tends to wick up in masonry. That's loose, that's loose too. There's some water coming down from this here. Mm. So I'll take a look on the inside. And then down at the bottom here, there's some minor water damage. Some paint could be applied. And then here's a complicated staircase going up three steps, turn, and then a narrow set of steps there around and then another drop down there and no handrail. So if this was wet and I needed to grab onto something to prevent a fall, it's missing. There are no handrails here. It's very nice, but just to be safe, now, my recommendations can be followed or not. Um, often an architect doesn't like to put things that are aesthetically um, poor looking, displeasing. For aesthetics, sometimes a handrail or a safety component is disregarded. But I'm a home inspector, so I'm looking for things that would maybe help somebody stay safe or more healthy. And while I'm going around, I'm looking at these wooden components where the tile roof kind of drains off. And it, it may be hitting these post ends, these beam ends, load bearing. They're cracked. I'm not worried about the cracks. I'm just looking for water. So off the tile roof here, water can drain off water has tension so it can move in different ways and it has some minor damage to this concrete here. And then I'll pay more attention to where these beams are. Looking for some more water damage or wood rot. And then sometimes my clients are concerned about pests and ants. So we have a, an ant trail here. And what I can do as a home inspector is follow the trail, see where they're coming from, see where they're going. Oftentimes they're not going into the home, but sometimes they do because they have found a food source, maybe in the kitchen or in the garbage. And I'll help my client find that.
by looking around and following the path. What a great view. But as a home inspector, I'm concerned with some safety issues where the height of this guard is too low in relation to this standing surface where people can stand here or here. And the height of this is too low to stop somebody from falling over. Our guard, remember, is a component of a safety system that prevents somebody from falling off. It's this vertical component, a barrier, a vertical barrier to prevent somebody from falling. And this one is too short. So I'll take out my measure app again. That's like 27 and a half inches. I'm not sure if that was accurate enough. Let's try again on this corner here, bottom to the top. You know, about 25, 27 inches. And it has spaces in between where a child can get through and fall. So let's use the measure app again and measure the space between here and there. And that's, that's large enough for a child to fall through. We don't want anything more than four inches. That's four and a half inches. So we have some larger spaces here that are a safety hazard, especially for small children. And they can actually use the rungs as a ladder and climb up and fall over. So it's a beautiful view, but it may not be safe. The wooden deck system looks in very good shape. It's a hard wood. It's been fastened and then covered up, patched here and there. I can't see what's below, but I can see that it is a rubber membrane, EPDM roof, but I'm not just, I'm not sure where it sloped out. Might be that pipe there. That might be the only drain from the roof. I haven't seen anything yet. Yep, and there's the other one. Okay, that makes sense. So that's a large enough four inch diameter drain pipe. And I suspect there might be another one over here, but I can't see it. So we're near the Mediterranean Sea. It's not salt water and corrosion that I'm worried about, but there still are fasteners that are hit by water, wind-driven rain that could corrode and rust. We want these fasteners to be in good shape. This is not a fastener. This is a light component that's installed by the homeowner or the builder in various areas. And there's a wire up above and a sensor and that little light turns on. This is not a fastener. That's another light that turns on. Little LED light fixture that was installed. There are the metal straps that we saw earlier at the garage roof. Just want to make sure that fasteners are in good shape. And I don't see any wood rot, especially where the wood meets masonry. On the outside, there's a little cabinet here and it's the hot water tank for the bedroom unit. So there's hot and cold water, electrical components. So we'll run hot and cold water in the bedroom right inside here. It is getting hot. The outdoor shower works and it drains. Another air conditioner unit. Supported well, it's not old, it's running, it's not making any strange noises. So we'll take a look on the inside and use normal operating controls, the thermostat, to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, cooling off the room. 
So we're on the outside again, where those stairs are, and below is that grassy area. The window exterior looks good. The stone exterior looks good. Every once in a while, we get a live wire. This is the laundry room. We'll turn that on, make sure it does a cycle. And then you have a, a grill, outdoor barbecue, they call it, with a sink and a, a chimney. It goes up. And we've got a problem here. I can't open these doors because they're painted shut. Oh, there we go. That just so we have a, a water leak here. And it's coming from a crack in the drain pipe. So the barbecue doesn't seem to be used very much. That's a very easy fix. So we have water coming from the sink. And coming down the steps. Pulling in the drain of water here. No handrail. And that's this area of concern where it's kind of flat underneath. And that's about it for the exterior. A few things. The insect damage at the load bearing components near the garage, the low lying area of the grassy area, the leaky sink at the barbecue, um, the railings and the handrail concerns, and a couple other things, but not bad on the exterior. Doing a double check, making sure we've seen just about everything on the outside, and then we'll move on to the roof and the interior. All right, let's take off in our drone. It's a safe way to inspect systems and components during a home inspection without leaving the ground. And this is a great view. What a great view of the Mediterranean. And here's the tile roof. We have defects like that one and that one and that one. Those are three new tiles and that's a crack tile. A couple more replacement tiles. I'm looking for damage like that. And I don't want to walk upon the tile roof because I will cause the damage. <laughs> so a drone is a perfect inspection tool to use. If you're going to hire an inspector to inspect your roof, make sure they can see it one way or another. And we have more damage. And these are very easy to replace, but you wouldn't know you had problems without an inspection. So there's a kick out flashing there. I really like that. But right there above the kick out flashing, there's a row of missing tile. And so hiring a home inspector as part of a routine maintenance plan is a good decision by a homeowner. And if you're buying a home, renting a home, or if you're a, a landlord, you're renting a home at Airbnb, it's a great idea to get the roof system inspected to make sure that the roof is functional and that you can get on 
the maintenance of the roof and repair things now before little problems become too big to fix. So when you're looking at a tile roof, great shot from above, there are so many different surfaces, so many different intersections between different materials. And the best inspection is one that goes back and forth all around up close and from afar and at different angles. So you get to see how the tile roof was actually built and structured and layered like here. Let's take a look at the pool at this house using InterNACHI's pool inspection checklist that every InterNACHI home inspector uses to inspect a pool and spa. There should be adequate fencing, gates and barriers and alarms and other protective devices installed for the pool. The deck around the pool should not be cluttered. There should be adequate means of egress in and out of the pool and the services leading to the pool should be slip resistant. And the decks on all sides of the pool should meet minimum safety standards. And this pool here seems to be vacuumed daily. That's good. There's no debris visible. The water is clean. No discoloration. No algae growth is visible. The main drain grates are bolted securely to the pool. Drain covers are installed. Water return inlets installed. The water level appears to be maintained to allow for the removal of floating debris. The water level appears at proper height to allow continuous overflow of water into the large gutter system. And the skimmers need to be checked and maintained and cleaned. And the coping stones and tiles around the pool, they should not be chipped, cracked, or loose. The pool shell should appear smooth without any readily visible defects. There shouldn't be any surface staining. The water temperature should be maintained within acceptable levels. The water temperature should be measured and recorded. If there are lights, they should be tested and operational and functional. And the pool water should be tested at the frequency required or desired. And these are drainage grates, grooves in the decks and surrounding areas of the pool so that there are no puddles all the water is drained away. There's drainage grate right there. Through there, water drains. It's collected and drained away. And as a safety feature, the steps and treads and ledges should be marked with contrasting color coding or tile on both the top and the vertical rise. There's a light fixture there. And more light fixtures with the controls on the inside, often on a timer or automatic sensor so that the, the lights turn on at night. The drainage grates need to be modern floor systems so that no one gets hurt. There's a spa installed. It's 
operational, it's clean, adequately maintained, no physical damage. The spa timer should be set and it should be adjustable. There should be an emergency shutoff switch for the spa installed and the emergency shutoff switch should be clearly labeled. Here's the pool components. Got the electrical panel and controls. Got the pipes and the valves. The type of water heater should be identified. There should be Thanks. adequate clearances around the water heater. The efficiency and BTU rating of the heater should be identified. Filters and additives to keep the pool water clean. We're gonna look for electrical problems, grounding, look for water leaks. The electrical breakers and circuitry should be identified. Safety features should be installed on the heater and the thermostat should be located. The check valves between the heater and the filters should be installed and the bonding and grounding should be visible. The pipes and fittings should not be leaking. The pipes should be supported adequately and they shouldn't be showing signs of calcification or corrosion or deterioration. And all piping, filters, and components that are part of the system should be labeled, tagged, color-coded, or otherwise identified. Okay, we're on the inside where it's cool. The air conditioner is working. Um, we have a kitchen and we have a living room and a couple bedrooms. And so what I like to do is just go around and orient myself just to know where everything is and then I can manage my time. As a home inspector, you want to be a time manager. You don't want to take all day doing a home inspection. You want to be efficient. You want to inspect everything. Don't miss anything. But you want to be efficient with your time. Okay, back in the kitchen. Typical European kitchen, small. And we have a dishwasher. It looks like it just ended. This is a German style dishwasher. Some of them pop open to let the heat escape. And there's this little arm in here and you just have to wait for it to be done. This is a refrigerator. It looks like one of the cabinets. Uh, looks like we have a crack. We have a cracked piece in the dishwasher right here. I'll put that in the report. Uh, the, the refrigerator looks like a cabinet and there's the freezer here. So there's a small freezer. Okay, a gas stove, propane, hot and cold water at the sink, exhaust hood. And that goes outside. Just like that bathroom exhaust pipe that goes outside. The windows, um, common European window, so a lock open with a hinge and this is open like that as a tilt there are no screens on the house that's typical but there are mosquitoes so screens would be really nice and sometimes you'll see through the concrete foundation wall there'll be a groove that's in the wall itself in the masonry and then a tube with some water or propane or drain pipes or electrical. So this is one of those. There's supposed to be an electrical light fixture here and probably connected to that switch, which is not installed. And over here we have a TV. Looks like some cable, internet cable, and some phone and internet cable there. Along the way, every once in a while, you'll see junction boxes in these walls. This is a foundation wall made out of concrete. And so those are junction boxes. And then the electrical box, the breaker box, and I bet there's a couple. And this is a typical breaker box. Looks like you got boiler, heat, uh, hot water, and these are labeled. So that's a typical breaker box. And this is, again, typical where you'll have um, a flexible plastic ribbed tube going through the masonry foundation wall in which um, flows electrical wires. And sometimes they're exposed. 
A lot of the interior doors in Europe are locked with deadbolts. It's like an exterior door. Here's a set of steps. This is a trip hazard because the, the risers are different in height and there isn't a handrail and it's a bit narrow. And then this area here, there's a, essentially a walking surface that somebody could trip off of. But it's typical for this type of home. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of it and um, making it a major defect. And then a low headroom at the stair. So if I stand at the stair, I can hit my head and I'm 6'3", this should be higher. Um, it's pretty typical and there's no way, <laughs> this is made out of concrete, you can't change the, the height of this. But I do want to put it in my inspection report for my clients. An area where there is ground, the ground is here where the driveway is. There's the driveway to the left. Let's see, you can see it outside. There's the car park. And then the ground comes above the floor of the bedroom. So what you want to do is you want to look in these areas and look for signs of water. Mm, possibly like that. So you want to keep an eye out on that. Bathrooms are small. You have the, the toilet and the bidet. Sometimes a tub, often not, just a, a small shower and a bathroom sink. Typical drain there. The handheld fixture. And the overhead shower. And the drain. And it's all masonry. Locked. Open on a hinge, side hinge. A lot of built-in cabinets, very typical. The interior, looking at structural components and load-bearing components. This is a minor crack in an interior wall. This is not load bearing. You could hear it's made out of brick and this is made out of concrete. So this is solid exterior wall. I see a window. So that's exterior wall. And then over here where it's curved, they'll build this out of brick and you can tell the difference between this slight hollow sound. Solid concrete with a masonry coating, cement coating, and then this is brick, made out of brick. And it, you can hear the difference. Brick, 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 concrete. Here's a load bearing component, right? This is gonna be concrete, concrete, concrete. Oh. And I don't think this is being used as a load bearing component because it's just for looks and detail. They brought the exterior style into the interior of the home. The exterior siding is now on the inside. That's nice. Looking for watermarks, any indications of prior roof leaks, any structural problems. There's a hairline crack right at this horizontal load bearing component. I believe this part maybe out of brick. That there, the triangle, the fill could be out of brick. I'm not sure, but I'll tell my client to keep an eye on the structural movement. In typical minor cracking at the corners of windows. Something to just to monitor and keep an eye on.
Okay, so let's take a look at the bedrooms that we saw from the exterior. They're accessible from the exterior. And that is actually a lemon tree behind me. Hmm. Cool. Let's take a look at one of the bedrooms. And this bedroom that I'm in is one that um, over here is where that slider door at that bedroom with the floor, the hard surface, sloped away and I thought that it might puddle up. And we were going to take a look on the inside, on this side. So it's over here. And I actually I see right here, there's some indications of a water problem, um, some efflorescence coming through. But um, I actually think that's a shower problem. So let's see, on the other side of this wall, yeah, that's the shower. So the shower wall here um, might be actually leaking through there, through that tile, and then coming out on this side of the wall. So that's not exterior water, that's interior water uh, plumbing problem. Now this is the exterior wall, and that looks pretty good. The wood flooring will indicate a problem if there is one. So no problems there. This is a closet to the bedroom. And this is the exterior wall. Right up there is that slider door. And we do have indications of some water coming in. This is water damage. That's the concrete foundation. The wood is okay, no staining there. But this is efflorescence, that white stuff. So we have water coming through this wall where it puddles up near that slider door. Okay, so that's why I wanted to see in here. I'll inspect the bathroom by flushing the toilets and running the sinks and I'll do, uh, we have a little sub panel, electrical panel here. I'll take a look at that. And I'll take a look at maybe the windows. Looks like some water damage here, doesn't it? Oh, it certainly does. So. Actually, that looks something like, that's more like infestation actually. That's infestation, see, under the surface. So we have some insect infestation. Somehow, right along here. Yeah, so that needs to be fixed. Let's take a look at the other components. Collect some toilets. Okay. There we go. And looking for plumbing leaks. This one has a nice water trap. That's good. And the shower. Here's normal operating control for the air conditioner unit. Okay, let's go on to the other two units. And it's the same inspection procedure. Got the bidet. Two handles controlling different fixtures. heating element. Again, looking for water problems coming into the bedroom from this wall. Behind this wall is dirt. 
and there's the unit controls and it's functioning. Let's go to the third unit. And again, this wall here is up against the, the dirt. So we've got the fixtures. So that was a home inspection at a house in Italy. I'm Ben Gramico from Internaci, the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. Make sure you get a home inspection on your home by a certified home inspector. And I'll see you at the next inspection.